Good evening. I am Tony Gattino, the founder of the USA Memory Championship uh, and the president of Gattino Consulting Group. And I've been doing a series of uh, Facebook Lives that uh, I've been talking about the different things that we should be focused on and aware of during this period of COVID-19 or uh, learning some things about our own thinking and our own uh, human intelligence that I think would be important for us at any time, at any age, that if we just knew them could make a huge difference in our lives. And I have been working at this now for over 20 uh, years and uh, researching and studying the human brain and continue to be, just be amazed at what we're learning about our own thinking capacities and what our own abilities are if we can just get into the belief that we can or we have a situation that uh, uh, arises in our life where we get to choose whether we're going to figure it out or whether we're going to just be a victim. And so I am pleased to talk in, uh, tonight about a gentleman I met about 10 years ago by the name of Jim Carroll. And Jim, uh, I was hosting uh, one of our USA Memory Championships at Con Edison in New York City in their uh, Thomas Edison Auditorium. And a gentleman comes up to me, he's got a black jacket and dark sunglasses, and you, you look at his website, and that's the picture that I got to see about 10 years ago. And uh, it is amazing to me that uh, what he's done over the last uh, 10 years with proving to people that there's so much more that you can do with your brain than you ever thought possible. So if you get to his website, jimcarroll.com, what you want to be looking for are podcasts that he has started today, a podcast series based on the guests that he's telling me he's got, just fabulous. But the podcast is underneath something called Beating the Odds. So they're beating the odds, and Jim has beat the odds. He's been through a number of clinical diagnoses uh, that have basically told him, you know, just plan on having it finished and over. And Jim has refused to succumb to being the victim and has really done the things that we talk about in our brain health series, in our brain power, uh, starting with exercising, nutritional habits, having the right mental uh, challenges that you put yourself through, having the right mental attitude in terms of your own self-belief. So I was uh, really delighted uh, when Jim asked me to be his first guest on his uh, podcast. Uh, to accept that invitation because I, I've known Jim for now 10 years and I call him the holy grail of the neuroscience world. Now, why do I call Jim the holy grail of neuroscience? Because in all of the reading that I've done, okay, if I continue to look at all of the readings that I do and the two books that I've written and the research that I'm doing now, Jim, to me, when I listen to what he's doing and the results of what he's accomplished and the people that he's trying to help uh, be our veterans with PTSD and doing USO tours and, and being somebody who wants to serve others. Uh, but what I see as he continues to learn and research and grow and challenge his brain, he continues to prove that we have an example of everything that I teach and I talk about on my Live with Tony Facebook Lives. So every time I get an opportunity to talking with Jim and he's telling me what he's doing with either be it a deck of cards or what he's doing now with his visual uh, abilities to absorb sceneries and absorb them and pick out things in, in nanoseconds and how he then can retain them. Uh, he's on our USA Memory uh, Committee to help us to spread the word that anyone can improve their memory given the desire and belief, so let's go belief and desire, belief and desire, the willingness to learn and challenge yourself, and then the, the willingness to practice. So he's got regular routines that he goes through every day, and he, with even the feats and the things he, he's accomplished and the demonstrations he's done, he never stops. And so why do I call him the Holy Grail? Because he never stops. And he's expanding his own intelligence, his own ability to learn and do things that what, what sometimes frightens me is that when people may look at him, they may look at him like he's some kind of a nerd freak or some weirdo 
And who could ever do this other than somebody that's kind of off out of a Ripley's Believe It or Not museum? And, and when you talk to him and you, you see the basis of when he started with some early clinical medical diagnoses, which I don't want to, not my privilege to talk about, I'll let Jim talk about that, you can read about it in his book, but the fact of the matter is he had some clinical diagnoses that almost most people would have said, okay, I'm just going to wait until they put me into the ground. And he had a tenacity and a fight about him where he decided he wasn't going to just lie down and say, okay, throw the dirt over me. And so he started doing this uh, bicycle. So he started you know, getting on and building up exercise. He started then from there to do some mental challenges. He started to do um, some magic. And so there's an interesting, I always think of Penn and Teller as I get to watch their show each week. I always say thing going to the New York Science Museum and here was a magic exhibit put out by Penn and Teller that was really a brain conversation and exhibit showing you how they can fool the brain. And so they are experts at brain science that then happen to use the knowledge they have about the brain in their magic acts. So here comes Jim along and he started to, to make a living because he had gotten laid off from his job at uh, Bethlehem Steel. As we all know, the steel industry kind of came down. And he did this, uh, this card trick and he started selling Avon products and became a top Avon salesperson going door to door. And he started with showing tricks and different things. But when you understand magic and you understand what he's done, he's really used the science of the human brain and his knowledge and his ability to expand his memory to really put this all together to create a dynamic entertainment package that if you don't understand everything he's doing, you think he's, he's kind of some freak of nature and he's doing some kind of a gimmick versus he's really taken years of practice and study and has built up a skill level starting with his memory and his physical um, uh, exercising, putting in nutrition with that. And so what are the things that we talk about? What are you doing for exercise? What are you doing for nutrition? What are you doing for mental challenges? What are you doing for social connection? What are you doing to get a good night's sleep and how are you managing your stress? So I think about that and then as I'm thinking of, of what he's done over the years uh, in the podcast that has now just uh, come out today, I would encourage all of my uh, Live with Tony uh, folks to take a look at Jim, J-I-M, Carol, K-A-R-O-L dot com and go look for the Beating the Odds podcast, and Tony Dottino is number one. I think you'll find it uh, interesting. It's a 45-minute uh, podcast. I enjoyed doing it with him. I could probably do two or three more with him and just talk about the different experiences we've had. But one of them we had that to me was eye-opening was uh, the ability to go into Advent Health and do a seminar that we call uh, Cognitive Fitness for about 375 employees of Advent Health at one of their major hospital locations. And here was a chance to, for Jim to get up in front of a group of people and we combined uh, four hours of teaching into what we call the boot camp for the brain. And so in this boot camp for the brain, we, I did some teaching, he did some demonstration. I did some teaching, he did some demonstration. And the thing that just blew the whole audience away was his ability to look at the bones of the human body. So we had a skeleton we got from one of the medical doctors there, got the skeleton, put it on a stage, and here we have almost 375 people in the room, and we're asking them who can tell us how many bones there are in the human body? And then can you name them? And the medical people now, three, including docs, three were able to do that. And here comes Jim coming down from the top all the way down to the ankle bones, uh, calling off what the different bones were to the human body. So at this point in time, uh, I think Jim is on, on the trail and his podcast series is going to be very, very interesting. If you've got time for podcasting uh, and listening to podcasts, uh, I've got 13 of them at the back end of our Maximum Memory Mastery where I've talked to CEOs, CIOs, CNOs, chief nursing officers, uh, about the work that I do in the consulting world and teaching executives about the human brain. So if you're interested in podcasting, at the back end of 
maximum memory mastery. If you just skim through that and get to the back end, sometimes our bonus material in that online course has got as much great stuff in it as the lessons are that you can read and study and practice on the front end. All coming back to the podcast that I did with Jim. And one of the first things I told you he did was, you know what, working out, doing exercises, and he did it at home. So here's in the current issue of the Cleveland Health Newsletter are different things that you can do in your home to maintain exercise. And in Jim's case, he taught, he got onto a bicycle, and then he put in flashcards, and then he changed his eating habits. And it was a step at a time, and you'll have the opportunity to take a look at what he does now. Tomorrow, I will come back to this. Uh, I've been getting more and more feedback and coaching from some social media gurus and experts, and what they've been encouraging me to do is keep my uh, Live with Tony uh, uh, broadcast down in less than 15 minutes, unless I want to go back to doing more podcasts. And right now, I'm good to do uh, Live with Tony uh, five days a week. I go Monday to Thursday, and I alternate between 7 p.m. and 3, and 7 and 3. Tonight is Wednesday. I'm at the 7 o'clock. Tomorrow is Thursday. I'll be back at 3. And then I do a Saturday broadcast at 3 o'clock trying to find the diversity of getting people who have time to then listen to maybe 10 to 15 minutes of something that I'm teaching. And as somebody that has recently told me, your education is just priceless. Uh, uh, we really need to figure out how to get people to understand the value of what you're delivering and then figure out how to get them to uh, appreciate that value by paying for it. I enjoy the Facebook Live broadcast. So I'm going to keep doing these and we're going to keep going at it and I'm having fun. It keeps me on my toes, I'm constantly reading and constantly wanting to bring that reading to you. So that is all I want to cover with you for tonight. It's uh, A-D-O-T-T-I-N-O at AOL.com. It's A-D-O-T-T-I-N-O at AOL.com. Uh, boy, we're, we're getting challenged with the, the COVID-19 stuff. Go back and listen to my Monday, Tuesday broadcast on adversity there's a lot of good stuff. I've gotten a lot of good feedback off of those uh, broadcasts in terms of how we handle the kinds of diversities that we're facing with in COVID-19 and all of the uncertainty. And it's like this ghost is, is coming up. So everybody, have a good evening, and we'll see you Thursday, tomorrow at 3 p.m. or in that time period.